In this video we're going to look at a somewhat complicated optimization problem, or at least one that's a little more challenging than others, mainly in the modeling step. Um, and it involves Jan, who is in a boat offshore. So if you read this problem, you might want to pause the video and read the problem, but Jan is located there, and the boathouse is located here. And she's trying to get there in the shortest time possible. So we're going to be minimizing time which means we're going to want to come up with a time function. Um, and this is the shore. And so the question is, where should she land? Uh, this, it might be hard to see, but this, this, <clears throat> this 8 represents the whole side, not just a piece of it. All right, so the question is, like, how far from... Um, how far from directly across from her, you know, directly to shore, she could swim directly to shore here, um, but that, and then she, you know, I'm sorry, not swim, but she could row, and then she could run the rest of the way, um, but that's probably not going to be the shortest amount, that's not going to take the shortest possible time. Um, notice this question is didn't ask for the shortest possible distance, if it asked for that, she would just go straight to the boathouse, but that would probably take more time. Um, so, our goal is to come up with a time function that represents the amount of time it would take her to swim, uh, to, to row, and then run, uh, run to the boathouse. And then we'll want to we'll find the minimum value of that function. A couple of things I just want to point out. It says here that uh, it takes her five hours if she went straight to shore. So, let's just check that. If she went straight to shore she would be rowing for six miles. So straight to shore. So if you went straight to shore, she would be running for six miles. So if we take the six miles and divide that by her time, or by her rate rather, not her time, her rate, which is two miles per hour, And then we add that to uh, her running time, which would be, she's doing 8 miles. And her rate there is three, uh, 4 miles per hour. This is going to be uh, straight shore time. This is going to be the amount of time it takes her to just uh, go straight to the shore and then run the rest of the way. I would pay attention to units on this. Notice that the units cancel because 6 divided by 2 miles per hour is the same as um, uh, 6 times uh, 1 half hours per mile. And the 6 has units. The 6 has units miles, so those cancel and you get three hours there and here if you do eight miles times one hour per four miles I'm just multiplying by the reciprocal when we divide it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal and I'm doing that just to show you how the units change here we've got six times a half which is three hours plus eight divided by four is two hours so that's where they're getting the that's where they're getting the that five hours from, okay. And and the reason I'm doing this too is this, this actual computation will help us set up the the generic function that models her time uh, for any given x value here in the diagram. So that would be going straight to shore. Um, and when I guess when I say straight to shore, I mean directly across from her. If she went straight to the boathouse. She went to straight to the boathouse. Well, then she would just be uh, rowing the entire time. And by the Pythagorean theorem, we can see that this would be 10 miles. So she would just be rowing the whole time. So it would be 10 miles divided by her rowing speed. And her rowing speed is 2 miles per hour, which becomes 10 miles times uh, 
one hour per two miles and that's also where we get our five miles from all right so notice in both of these situations I'm using the fact that we know distance equals rate times time which means that time equals distance divided by rate that's how I got the times in both of those equations or those both of those computations below so when we come up with our time function we're probably going to want to be setting up uh, setting up a function that involves dividing taking our distance and dividing it by our rates so in the next slide we'll do this analytically uh, using variables and not actual numbers All right, I've zoomed in on this diagram here. So let's start with the modeling step. We've got our diagram. And we want to come up with a time function. And the time function needs to be in terms of this this distance x. This distance is the distance from across, you know, the shore directly across from Jen um, to wherever she decides to land. So first let's just note that we noted that distance equals rate times time, which means that time equals distance divided by rate. Okay, so we're going to use that fact because hopefully we can agree that her time, her total time, is going to be time rowing. plus her time running. So now what we need to do is just come up with expressions for these two, uh, these two quantities here, time rowing and time running. So, and we want it to be in terms of that x there, so hopefully we, could, we can get it to a point where we can say this is t of x. So you give me, a dis, you give me a, a, this x value and I'll tell you the time it will take her to get to that boathouse. So time rowing, um, well, her time rowing in this diagram here, using the this left-right triangle, her time rowing is going to be um, determined by this distance divided by the time the, the the rate at which she can row. So we don't know that distance as a number, but it's we can get an expression for it because if this is x and this is 6, then by the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to call that the square root of x squared plus 36. All right, so there's an expression for that arbitrary hypotenuse there in that right, that left-right triangle. So her time running would be her distance, uh, I'm sorry, her time rowing would be her distance rowing divided by the rate. Her distance rowing, we just found, was the square root of x squared plus 36 divided by her rate rowing, which was 2 miles per hour, plus, and then her time running at that point, well, if she lands right here, and this whole distance is 8, then this must be 8 minus x, and so that is her distance running, and so the time running would be that distance divided by the rate at which you can run, which was, I think we saw, 4 miles per hour. So now I've got a function that tells me the time it takes her for, for any arbitrary distance from, the, um, from this, this point here. It'll tell me the time it will take for her to get to the boathouse. And so now what the, our goal is is to use calculus to find the minimum time, to find the minimum value of this function. Uh, let's first talk about the domain of it. So the domain, and here you might want to appeal just to the diagram. Um, the smallest x can be is zero, and it, right? So it could be zero, because she could just go directly, directly down, and then run the rest of the way. The biggest x can be would be eight, right? If if she actually just takes the hypotenuse, uh, uh, takes the the length or takes the path represented by the hypotenuse of this big triangle, then x would be eight in that case. So there's our domain. All right, and at this time, let's solve by taking the derivative. So I'll just re 
rewrite the function down here. t of x equals, I want to write it as 1 half x squared plus 36 to the 1 half to make taking the derivative easier. And then I want to write that 8 minus x over 4. I would probably write that as 8 over 4, which is 2, minus 1 fourth x. I think that's the easiest thing, that's the easiest way to do it, just for taking the derivative. So t prime of x would be, so a half times a half gives you a fourth, x squared plus 36 to the negative one half, and then don't forget the chain rule, times by the 2x, the derivative of the inside. And then the derivative of this right expression is just 0 minus a fourth. So there's our derivative. Um, this is, um, let's see, we're looking for critical points now. So critical points occur where the derivative is 0 or undefined. This is defined, um, this is defined everywhere. Um, because even if I write it like this, that's a negative exponent, so it would be a negative square root down here. And then that 2x can be up here. And in fact, that 2 and that 4 can reduce to make this a 1 half. So I have 1x over 2. And there's a square root in the bottom, but uh, that it's there's always going to be a positive value under the square root because it's x squared plus 36 um, minus a fourth. So really, on, the only critical points can occur when this is equal to zero. So we'll set that equal to zero. So now let's solve. So I'll add a fourth to both sides. Uh, maybe you cross multiply at this point, so you get 2 square root x squared plus 36 equals 4x. And maybe square both sides at this point, so 4x squared plus 36 equals 16x squared, which means that uh, 4x squared plus 36 times 4 be 144 equals 16x squared. And that means that 144 equals 12x squared, which means 12 equals x squared, which means that the square root of 12 is equal to x. We don't need the plus or minus, we don't need the minus square root because we're talking about a distance here. All right, so let's make sure we found a, a minimum. Here's my t prime number line, goes from 0 to 8, x, t prime of x, and root 12. So 1 is less than root 12. If I plug that into the derivative, and I guess I'll plug it into this, this version here, if I plug that into the derivative, I get 1 over 2 square root of 37, and the square root of uh, 37 is a number that's a little bigger than 6. So a number that's a little bigger than 6 times 2 is a number that's a little bigger than 12. So I've got 1 12th minus a fourth. And so that's a negative because a fourth is definitely bigger than that. If you didn't catch that reasoning, all I'm doing is figuring out whether this, what I just put in the box there, is positive or negative when I plug in a 1. Um, let's see, the square root of 12 is definitely smaller than 5, so I think I'll use that. If I plug in 5, I get 5 over 2 square roots of 25 plus 36, and 25 plus 36, I know that 5 over that fraction should be, that should be bigger than a fourth. So you might want to just double check that, but that should be bigger than a fourth. Well, that tells me that that here is a min, and that's what we wanted. So, um, so I found a min there, and that means that if we want to interpret, since the question originally asked um, to find the location for her, we're going to say so. That means you know, root twelve is this. 
that's that distance, we're going to say Jan should Jan should land root 12, which I'm just putting in the calculator if you're someone who likes to use whole numbers it's about 3.46 roughly Jan should land 3 points root 12 or 3.46 um, in the units here are miles I believe, miles um, uh, miles up shore from the spot directly uh, directly across from her. All right, so there's our interpreting and if it asked, I don't think it asked for the minimum time, but let's say it asked for the minimum time, we would want to plug root 12 in for x. So t of root 12, if you put that in your calculator, you end up getting, let's see, the square root of root 12 squared is 12 plus 36 divided by 2 plus 8 minus root 12 over 4, and that ends up being about 4.598 hours. All right, so we know where she has to land. That's over here on the left, and if we were asked for the actual time it would take her to do that, it would be 4.598 hours, a little more than four four and a half hours. So that's about a half hour sh uh, shorter than going directly to the boathouse from where she is or going directly to shore and then running. So it saved her about a half an hour doing this analysis. So that was kind of a tricky problem, especially the modeling part. But uh, hopefully this just gives you another, another opportunity to study an optimization problem.